Good morning, Maryland. I'm Christian Schaefer here with Dr. Nina Ferreras from GBMC. Thanks so much for coming in to Thanks talk to us me. this morning. Yeah, Dr. Ferreras is a colorectal surgeon at GBMC. Uh, so what we're talking about today is the importance of getting tested and making sure that you don't have colon cancer because it is a very common type of cancer, but also very preventable. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely preventable. And we would encourage everybody in the month of March, which is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, to come in and get your screening colonoscopy. So just so, so we define all the terms here, colon, this is the lower part of the intestine uh, before, you know, you've eaten all your food, it's gotten all the way around, it's getting ready to leave, what's left of it. Why, are there, why is it such a common form of cancer in that area? So your colon and you really your whole digestive tract is... Uh, responsible for digesting your food, so it's always regenerating the lining. So those cells are turning over frequently, and whenever cells turn over, there's a chance that something could go wrong in the replication process, and that uh, is what leads to cancer. Um, the colon and rectum together are your large intestine. People ask that question a lot, and the rectum is the piece just before things exit. Mm -hmm. And potentially, you could get a polyp or cancer in in either of those areas. Correct. Yeah, polyps happen in both the colon and the rectum. So, mm -hmm. over the years, people have heard about different kinds of tests, and sometimes they don't want to necessarily think about it, much less talk about it. Uh, I just feel like more people should be talking about these these things. It's not like embarrassing. It's just something that can affect your health and needs to be talked about more and have more education about it. Correct, exactly the same way that people talk about other forms of screening like mammograms and that sort of thing. A colonoscopy or other screening tests for colon cancer um, can be very important in maintaining good health. So uh, the colonoscopy, earlier we were talking, you called it the gold standard as far as yep. checking to see what's going on. What does it entail and uh, what would it take for someone to come in and get one? What, if someone wants to get one, what happens for that patient? So uh, for the patient, what happens is you'll typically have a visit or a screening with the provider who's going to do the colonoscopy. Um, we'll give you a prescription for uh, preparation, which needs to be drank the day prior. You'll be on clear liquids the day prior to your screening test. Um, take your prep, pass a lot of stuff from below, um, and then come in the morning of screening for your uh, procedure. You'll have to have somebody bring you in and bring you home because we don't want you driving. We do put you into sort of a twilight sleep so that you're comfortable during the procedure. Honestly, most people don't remember any part of it at all other than waking up and getting cookies or crackers in the recovery area. Yeah, it's not, I actually have had this uh, done. I've got a little bit of family history. Mm -hmm. um, so even though uh, the recommendation used to be wait till you're 50 years old to get one. Mm -hmm. Now I believe the American Cancer Society is recommending 45. Correct. Um, yeah. And for people with family history, potentially even earlier, right? Potentially even earlier. So for folks with a family history, we recommend 10 years before your relative was diagnosed with colon cancer, since 10 years is sort of the number that we think it takes for polyps to develop into cancer. Um, so. 10 years prior to your relative, or really if you have any symptoms that are concerning, we recommend getting it checked out. So uh, you mentioned the PrEP. I think if some people have heard of that, uh -huh. they, they do either, they're concerned about it. Uh, in, in my experience, I think it's improved somewhat over the years. I think that it's not quite as much that you have to drink or to do. Is what, What's changed with that over, over the years, the PrEP? Correct, yeah. The newer formulations are smaller volumes of right. liquid, and they can often be mixed with something that you actually enjoy drinking, Gatorade, Crystal Light, something like that, um, which is a little bit easier to stomach than the, the traditional preps, but they accomplish the same goals. Sometimes your medical history or your uh, physician's preference will play into what you get for your prep, um, but for the most part, they have improved significantly. And the reason is when you come in to do the test, it's got to be clear and you can see everything inside. The cleaner things are when we go in to do the test, the better a screening you're going to get. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, now, and some people these days, there's actually television ads for a test that you somehow do at home and then send off to get the results later. What do you know about that type of test? Some people, maybe they're concerned about getting a colonoscopy. They would either prefer that test or mm -hmm. they might just be curious about it. What's your thoughts on that? So the stool DNA test, uh, I think Cologuard is the one that we've seen advertised uh, most recently, um, is, is a screening tool, and any screening is better than no screening. So we'd prefer to see you do something if you're, if you're 
not willing to come in for the colonoscopy, that can be uh, a decent starting point. Um, it looks for DNA released by polyps or colon cancer. Um, the polyps need to be a little bit larger, so it can miss some smaller polyps. And if there are any abnormal findings, you will be recommended to come in and get your colonoscopy done anyways. So you could be heading that direction regardless. Correct. Yeah. And uh, your primary care physician, uh, what's their role in this? Do they recommend that you see an expert on gastrointestinal issues? Is, what, how's the process typically work for a patient? So the primary care physician plays a big role. Again, this is part of, of standard preventative care. We really are trying to catch cancers early, catch cancers before they become cancer when they're still polyps, um, because we can actually remove them with colonoscopy before they become cancer. Um, so your primary care physician's role is really to send you into a specialist, either a gastroenterologist or a colorectal surgeon for screening. If you have any symptoms that are concerning, change in bowel habits, blood in your stool, abdominal pain, um, things like that, um, or when you reach screening age. So Dr. Ferreris, you do a lot of surgery uh, on patients who, uh, have they been diagnosed with colon cancer? That's when they come potentially to you to get that surgery done, right? Correct. Uh, yeah. how, how difficult yeah. of a surgery is that? Uh, and can you know that you've removed an entire tumor uh, when you go and take it out? Or does it vary depending on the situation? It varies a little bit depending on the situation. Surgery technology has also progressed and we're doing a lot of our operative intervention minimally invasive uh, now either with laparoscopy or with the robotic system with the da Vinci. Um, we have been using both. The surgery itself is um, relatively straightforward from our standpoint, um, but it is considered major abdominal surgery and the recovery has improved as well. We have an enhanced recovery pathway that helps patients with their recovery and get out of the hospital faster after surgery. Um, we can often know that we have taken the entire primary tumor. Colon cancer typically spreads first to the lymph nodes um, and that tissue is also removed at the time of surgery and then looked at by the pathologist to see if there's any additional treatment needed afterwards. And it's common sense, but you have the actual experience doing it. I imagine that if you do catch it earlier, mm -hmm. you, you will see that it's easier to get most of it out or all of it out. Is that a good assumption? Absolutely. Patients have much better long-term survival rates. If we can catch the cancer early, there's less likelihood of needing additional treatment like chemotherapy mm -hmm. or in the case of rectal cancer, radiation. Um, all of those things are less likely to be necessary if we can catch the cancers as early as possible. And the earliest would be if you get the colonoscopy, I understand you can take the polyps out right during that initial colonoscopy. Yeah, absolutely. And we can take them out honestly, before they become cancer. Um, the most common types of polyps we consider precancerous, and if we can take those out before they become cancer, we've made good strides. Do you know right there, or do you have to test it and see if it's cancerous cells? Um, typically, they have to be sent for pathology to mm -hmm. tell if they're precancerous or cancerous, and then recommendations will be made on your next screening based on that pathology. And if they are, potentially, though, you've caught it as early as you can, now it's time Correct. to talk about a more advanced surgery. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So that's the steps. Um, if people have other types of disorders mm -hmm. uh, with you know, their digestive system, are there things that can be done or is that a sign that they might be at risk for more serious issue like colon cancer? Um, or it, is it not necessarily leading one to the other all the time? It depends on what the digestive issues are. Colonoscopy is often part of the evaluation of other um, digestive issues. Um, so having that done as part of, of that evaluation is uh, valuable um, to rule out anything serious like a cancer. Um, and then the, whatever the digestive issue is can be dealt with as is appropriate based on what it is. We, we get some questions sometimes about people with just their diet. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, are, do you subscribe to what the, the nutritional uh, the, the dietary experts will tell us, look, you need to be high in fiber, you need to have vitamins and all this. Do, do you, does that actually impact what winds up down at the bottom of the digestive system? Um, absolutely, it does. A nice high fiber diet definitely decreases your risk, maybe not for colon cancer, maybe yes, maybe not. We're not 100% sure, but certainly for other digestive conditions like diverticulitis. Um, and uh, there are very few things that we know for sure impact your risk of getting colon cancer, although recently 
processed meat and diets that are very heavy in red meat have come out as being things you want to avoid. So everybody should be eating their low fat, lots of fish, lots of vegetables, high fiber diets. Makes sense. If, you, if you're having a concern mm -hmm. like that, should you come in as quickly as possible? Or do you like, oh, I can wait a few months till I get this taken? How quickly do you think you, people should see a doctor if they are having a concern about the digestive tract? If they're having an issue, if you're seeing you know, weight loss or a change in your bowel habits, definitely talk to your primary care provider about it. They know you well and will be able to make good recommendations. I would suggest getting anything that you are th thinking about getting checked out, come in and get it checked out. Better to have it, have it be nothing and taken care of than to be something that continues to worry you. Would you say, I've got a question from Caitlin here, um, mm -hmm. that that recommendation on age 45 for starting screenings is now for everyone or is it, what if, if it's a person who does not have a family history mm -hmm. and is not seeing any symptoms? Mm -hmm. Are they still generally okay waiting until they're 50 or is that really 45 when we really start wanna thinking about that recommendation now? So the American Cancer Society is, has recently, as of 2018, made that suggestion that around the age of 45, everybody should really be thinking about coming in for screening. If you're having any digestive issues, we would recommend thinking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, Amy is just asking about another type of test online, an ultrasound. Is that something that would work for colon cancer or is it, or colon screening, is it more the colonoscopy getting in and actually looking at what's going on, is that better? The colonoscopy is always gonna be the gold standard test. Um, an ultrasound within the colon can sometimes be used as part of the staging process for colon cancer, but is not usually used for screening. Um, there is a virtual colonoscopy performed uh, with a CT scanner that is an alternative, but you can't escape the prep. It's necessary for that CT. Even for that, you do the prep regardless. Colonography, yeah, absolutely. So my feeling is, is if you're gonna do the prep anyways, come in and get the gold standard testing. Right. Then you'll know what you're dealing with. Exactly. And uh, when, when this is always an interesting word when we talk to people about cancer, but you've dealt with, uh, you've done the surgery on people. If someone has a tumor removed and they, the lymph nodes are, are clear and that, are, is that, are they cured of cancer? What's the term that you use at that point for someone who has been diagnosed with colon cancer? Cure is a tricky term. Yeah. Um, we, we can say that we have removed the entire primary tumor, that there does not appear to be any spread. Um, we like to monitor those patients very closely. They'll come in and visit with us uh, every three to six months for the first three years after uh, colon cancer surgery. They'll get repeat colonoscopies at shorter intervals at a year after, at three years after. Just we to monitor, check on how they're doing. Yeah, we monitor them very closely for recurrence for at least the first five years. Once you've kind of hit that five year mark, if you have not had a recurrence, then the chances that you will have a recurrence go down from there. Mm -hmm. um, but again, cure is, is always a tricky word to commit to. Well, take it the opposite direction. What if they don't come in and get a test? Like how quickly can this spread to the lymph nodes and then I imagine to the other organs in the body. It, cancers can behave, even colon cancers can behave very differently depending on their features and without getting overly technical. Um, some people's cancers do progress much more quickly than others. So if, again, if you're having issues, I recommend getting it checked out as soon as possible. Mary Beth's asking online here um, about, we, we always we use the word symptoms. Mm -hmm. And people, you know, if we're, we're noticing certain symptoms with bowel movements that they're talking about and they want to know if they can see. She was asking, you know, what should we be looking for? Are we looking for blood or are we looking for, what, how do you tell if there's an issue with that? Yeah, um, so change in bowel habits is the most common symptom that is associated and that sort of can manifest as uh, diarrhea or slowing down of the bowel habits or a narrowing of the caliber of the stools, all of which are pretty subtle changes, but you know yourself and you know if your bowel habits are changing. Obviously blood in the stool is concerning and should be evaluated. Um, unexpected weight loss, abdominal pain, bloating, those are all things that are concerning. They don't necessarily mean that you have colon cancer, but they are signs that you should go in and get, get things evaluated. And again, just to reiterate for people that the, the test itself, mm -hmm. um, it just isn't as difficult 
I think, for people to handle as they might have in their mind of what they, what they expect from this test versus what actually it is. I feel like there's a bit of a disconnect there. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, nearly as bad as people think that it is. Yeah. Um, and we've made, like I said, big strides in making it more comfortable. The prep is now more convenient, more tolerable. Patients are tolerating it much better. We just opened a brand new center for uh, colonoscopy and endoscopy at GBMC, which um, makes the whole experience nicer. There are private patient rooms and makes is aimed at making the entire experience uh, more comfortable. Yeah, and we have more information about that online as well. But Dr. Ferreris, really thank you coming in and talking to us about this stuff today. Uh, <laughs> and I know you've got some surgeries to do even today. You're, I do. <laughs> you've got a busy day scheduled. So uh, good luck with those. And thanks thank again you. so much for coming in. And thanks you know, like for I said me. earlier, you can get tested. The, the better chance you have to find something early before it becomes a major problem. Dr. Nina Ferreris from GBMC, thanks so much once again for coming in. And thanks to you for watching this Facebook Live discussion here on the WMAR2 News. Facebook page. Have a great day.